Oh, rain drops. Rain down on me. Hey, Shanti. Baby, there is a new sheriff in town. And her name is Mia B. Lion Thornton. Yes, Mia! Honey, a dethroning has occurred. A force has been multiplied. And a force has been subtracted. And a force has been divided. Baby, today we are going to talk about the most shocking news to hit Potomac. Mia Thornton scored first seat at the Real Housewives of Potomac reunion. And Giselle Kobe Bryant has been dethroned as a second seater. No, not Southern Streeter, child. A second Streeter. This is like when Kobe Bryant lost the championship, and I think he blamed Shaq. <laughs> Allegedly. I, listen, I never thought I'd see the day. And the reason why I wanted to do this episode is because I want to explain to you guys the makings of a reunion and what it means, okay? Shout out to the genius producers over at Potomac for making what I call a great decision with the seating assignment. And I'm going to tell you why. But first, we have to acknowledge me. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> I can't help myself. It's all Listen, by the way, this is fun. I hope y'all take this seriously, okay? Um, as you all know, I have been saying... <laughs> get this out okay please thank you i have been saying for months that mia thornton is the face and the future not the face i have been saying that mia could be the face but i have been saying that mia is the future of potomac i got red y'all read me down mia be lying is Mia be securing a flute, honey? Mia be popping. Mia be sitting. Mia be first chairing. I, so yesterday, I had a very, 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 very busy day yesterday. I flew into a city for a meeting that I had. I flew into a city yesterday for like four hours for, for a meeting that I, I, I had to have an in-person meeting. Because when you when you have a meeting with me, you gotta you gotta be around this. You know, like I can give you a good meeting on a Zoom, but in person is better. Which is why I'm taking my podcast on the road and I'm making some announcements next week. <laughs> Cause I want y'all to meet me in person. It's cute for the Zoom and the YouTube and all that stuff. But when you meet this in person, honey, you get to feel the energy. So I'm making more announcements next week. Oh, and by the way, um, my podcast video with Dr. Melody Cherie Rogers, I was going to upload it this week. But, child, I watched it. It is so good. But the gag is... The premiere episode of Huntsville is about the podcast. So then I was like, I'm going to get in trouble by the network if I release my podcast episode before the premiere because it reveals what's happening in the premiere episode. So unfortunately, I have to wait. So I'm going to do this. Okay, big announcement now. I will drop 
my live podcast interview that I had with Dr. Melody Cherie Rogers the night of the season premiere of Huntsville. And no, I'm not going to tell y'all the premiere date because I ain't about to get in trouble. See, I know how to act. Okay? So, in the premiere episode, you're going to see some of the podcast and you're going to gag. So after Huntsville comes off at nine o'clock PM Eastern, I am going to drop the full podcast part one. Cause there's two parts. Cause my podcast, I can, I'm going to give it away. So y'all got to wait. I don't like getting in trouble. The network will be like, you just gave away the premiere callers. Why would people watch it? So, y'all going to get it then. So, anyways, I had a a very important meeting yesterday. I had to fly into the city. I had the meeting. And, I'm, you know, I'm trying to give the person across from me all of Carlos King, like, you know, all my personality. You know how I do. I'm like, yeah, you know. I don't code switch because, you know, my voice is my voice. So, I wasn't like, yeah. You know, I was like, yeah, so I'm teasing. So as I'm in this meeting, my phone is blowing up. And I'm like, is something going on on one of my shows? Like something happening? What's going on? So then you know how towards the end of a meeting, it, it kind of dies down. So I got a chance to glance at my phone and somebody who works for me sent me a notification and it was a seating chart and I glanced at it because I think Potomac seating chart has always been predictable if I'm being honest so when I saw this seating chart I just knew Giselle was going to be on if the camera's facing this way Giselle is always on this side if we're watching the show right Giselle is always on this side next to Andy. And then Karen's always on this side next to Andy. So I, I looked at it, but also knew that if this person sent it to me, something must be different about it. Because why would she send me the seating chart if it's the same old shit, right? So then I'm like, no, Lowe's, I think you need to, like, you know how you... um. You touch the iPhone screen and you expand the photo. So I did not want to be rude in the meeting. So I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, uh-huh. So then I got my phone out and I'm like, yeah, yeah, uh-huh, yup, yeah, uh-huh. So I'm like this and I expand the photo and baby, when I saw Mia was first chair? I'm in the meeting like this. <gasps> and they said, is something wrong? I'm like, no. Nothing's wrong, honey. Everything is right. So then I look on the other side, and I saw Karen in the first seat. I'm in a meeting gagging on my phone. I'm like, Karen? And when I saw Giselle Kobe Bryant, in the second seat. I said, oh, they are sending Giselle a very strong and loud message. So the meeting continued for another 20 minutes and no shade, I was distracted. <laughs> Cause I'm like, okay, Wow, I, I I gagged, and then, um, I I knew that my Twitter mentions were gonna were already crazy, cause I know you raindrops. I know y'all were like, Carlos, get your ass in here, cause y'all talk to me crazy, and it's fine. So after the meeting was over, I hop in the car. I'm I'm being driven back to the airport, so I'm able to like look at no shade i didn't look at the other positions of who, who who was seated when i saw mia in the first seat and i saw karen and i saw giselle next to karen i was i i 
No shade. I didn't want to. I didn't care about nobody else's CD because that gagged me. So I'm in the car and I'm like going through my Twitter mentions. Y'all going crazy. Carlos, come in here, girl. Look at this bitch. Da, 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 da. Y'all not here. Y'all not here to talk to me. And I'm gonna be real with y'all. I said, "Wow, they ain't playing with Giselle." This is a very strong and loud message for Giselle. To lose your first seat that you had for, I think, seven consecutive years. I believe this is season eight we're in now, right? If I'm wrong, correct me. Let me just go with it. Wait, I'm a journalist. Hey, Portia. Hey, Tamar Braxton. Hey, Shannon Sharp. Let me, let me get the facts straight. We are in season... Because, you know, y'all want to read me, so let me just get my facts together, child, okay? We are in season eight. Okay. Thank you, Google. <clears throat> to have the first chair for seven consecutive seasons is... Let's have a real conversation. You're pretty much cemented as the face of the show. I know y'all don't like to hear that. I always keep it real with y'all. To be first chair seven consecutive seasons, you're the face of the show. Kyle Richards has never lost her seat. She is arguably the face of Beverly Hills. Teresa Judice, there is no Jersey with, without Teresa. She has always, well, not always, Teresa was not first seat her first season, okay? She was not first seat her first season. Okay. Up until then, Teresa has been first chair. But Kyle has always been first chair. Nene Leakes has always been first chair. Even when Nene Leakes came back to season eight reunion and told Portia, thanks for keeping my seat warm, honey, I may be on this segment for five minutes, but I'm not going to be next to Phaedra or down there next to Cynthia Bailey, honey. Uh-uh. I'm on this stage for five minutes, season eight reunion. Go watch it if you didn't see a child. Nene Lee said, me and my jumpsuit and my bob, I will be sitting next to Andy because Nene is the face of Atlanta Housewives. Right? So, to see Giselle lose her seat, I said, they are really not only sending a message to Giselle, and I'll get to that in a second, what that message is. To me, this is my opinion, um, they also were sending a message to the audience, and I am audience. They were sending a message to us saying, we've heard Carlos' podcast. I'm teasing. <laughs> They are going to kill me. I literally am joking. Give me a break, Nell Carter. I am kidding. Like a Kit Kat bar. Leave me alone. Michael Jackson song. I digress. They were sending a message to the audience saying, we've heard you loud and clear. We know some changes have to happen. We're listening. Give us a chance. Because I never thought I'm being real. I never thought I, I see the day Giselle lost her seat. That that's that's a big deal. I'm not gonna downplay it. Um, that's a huge deal. It's equivalent to Nene and Kim Zosiak sitting second. Can you imagine Nene Leaks sitting second seat? Imagine Kenya Moore having first seat and Nene sitting next to Kenya. Like, can you can you even picture that? So when I saw that photo, I said, wow, I'm curious how Giselle reacted. I guess we'll see at the reunion. Um, Giselle knows she's the face of the show. And I think all of us believe that Giselle is Andy's favorite at Potomac. I've seen that on Twitter. A lot of y'all believe that. I think she believes it too. No shade. Um... I think she gagged, and I think Giselle should be 
I'm not going to say she should be worried. Giselle's not getting fired, right? Um, but I think they want her to know that based on your performance this season, um, we have our eye out on you. And the, the louder message is for all of us to know, and this is how I live my life, you never get comfortable. I don't care what job you have in this life, whether you're a teacher, a secretary, a flight attendant, you are an investment banker, you are a housewife, you know, I don't care what job you have, you never get comfortable. And I love me some Giselle. Um, I made her number nine of the top 10 greatest housewives of all time, and I'm not taking that back. I strongly believe Giselle got comfortable. I I used this platform to this is the thing about my podcast. The smart ones knows this. Like Mia. I'm going to call it out. There's a couple of reality stars who listen and watch my podcast. Okay? And if I have a strong opinion that may not be favorable, they listen and they apply it to do better because this is my way of, of messaging something to them. Whether or not I have your phone number, this is my way of messaging something to you. I did it with Marlo, right? Um, I told you guys, um, I did a video about Atlanta Housewives and I don't like how Marlo was acting. And I called her, we, we spoke about it, and I told her, like, I'm going to talk about it, you know, because I know that Marlo is sensitive. So I wanted to offer that because I love me some Marlo, and she is my friend. Um, if I don't have your phone number, um, this is my way of, 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 of giving me, putting you up on game. And the ones who get it, get it. Mia got it. I, I labeled her Mia be lying. And she she ran with it. Did she call me and cuss me out? Yes. But I told you guys I live for that because I said it goes to show you you care about your position. She cussed me out something good. And I, the whole time I was like, what you say, Mia? But secretly I was like, you know, Read me. I don't care. She read me. And I said, well, I, I was saying it. If you, I said to her, if you listen to what I'm saying, whatever. But um, anyways, I digress. Um, Mia, listen. <laughs> I'm not taking credit for it. Don't think that. Please don't think that. But I, I will say... I use this platform to give the girls advice. And I'm not going to sugarcoat anything because the only way you could be great in life is people being real and honest. And I have said to Giselle multiple times that you are the face of the show. With great power comes great responsibility. And I don't like what I'm seeing. Quad Webb told y'all in my interview with her, I will call her and said. I don't like what I'm seeing. What are you doing? That ain't cute. You need to stop, right? Um, there's people who listen and act accordingly, and they win in the end. And there's some who take it personally, and they don't like me, and they don't want to talk to me anymore, and that's fine. And they, they think they shit doesn't stink, and that's fine. Um, I think this is a humbling experience for Giselle. And I think she needed it. I think she carried herself like the star of the show because at one point she was. But I think I think she carried it and didn't understand that when you are the star of the show, it is your job to rally the troops. It's your job to be the force multiplier because the force multiplier is not just somebody who activates a scene. They it, it's, it's, a, it's a very... Being a force multiplier is not just somebody who, like, I activate scenes and I get the girls moving. That's a very large part of it. But the secret sauce 
and force multiplying is when you also rally the girls together and get them on one accord. That's why not everybody is a force multiplier. Kyle Richards is a force multiplier. She'll get into it with Doree and Sutton and Garcelle, but she also knows how to rally the troops and get the girls to come back together. Not everybody has that ability. It's a very difficult job. And I, I fought for Giselle to be that because I saw what was going down. And I used this, um, my platform, to express it in order to help the situation. This season of Potomac, to me, is not great because Giselle refuses to be a force multiplier and to, like, talk to Candace, come to a resolution, agree to disagree, let's forgive each other and move on from it. They're all looking to, to Giselle for that. And in my opinion, I felt that Giselle was like, whatever, I didn't got to forgive you. I'm going to be here next season. We'll see if you are. That was the attitude she was giving from what I've seen on the few episodes I watched. And based on the clips that I see on Instagram, she was still giving that. And I think the producers had to make a choice. I believe they probably spoke to her multiple times during filming saying, this is bad. And I think she refused to maybe multiply her force and they wanted to let her know i think it's embarrassing that seven seasons in you lose your seat the eighth season um but i hope it's the wake-up call that she needed i i i hope the wake-up call for her because i the thing about giselle is this because y'all were reading me Carlos, is she still Giselle Kobe Bryant? Huh? You you swore up and down, honey. She was the face of the show. I'm not going to take back what I felt. I, I, I'm not. That's crazy. Um, I said this to you guys before. In real life, and I hate saying real life like people are playing a character. Some are, but some aren't. In real life, Giselle is a good time. I literally love me some Giselle. I think she's a great person. Um, she's fun to be around. We had a good time at Portia's wedding. She's a good girl. My producer, my former producer who produced my podcast the first season, um, she met Giselle when Giselle came on my podcast. She was like, oh my God, Giselle cool as shit. I said, I keep trying to tell people Giselle is cool. It doesn't translate on TV, unfortunately. And that's something she has to work with. That's, I'm sorry, that's something she has to work on. I, I I find her to be a lovely woman. I think sometimes when you are in these positions of multiplying, you sometimes get in your own way. And Karen had to swoop in and scoot her down and get in her way. And I think that was the message they were trying to send to her. And I hope she realized it so that come next season, because she's coming back next season, guys, um, that she can do better in terms of when you are the face of a show, you have to come together. We saw Nene and Portia get into it, and Nene and Portia found a way to get back to being friends. Um, Nene was a great force multiplier because Nene cared about the show. And Nene would get into it with everybody. But when I worked with Nene, she would always find her way to get back in the mix with everybody. And it's a hard job to have, but it's, it's an important one. So it's a strong message. Be clear. Be clear, the seating assignments on these reunions are very thought out. It's a conversation. 
It's a process. And yes, if you have a great season um, and you're the most talked about in the season, you do get first seat. Yes. But when you're the face of the show, like a NeNe Leaks or Kyle, there were a couple of seasons NeNe wasn't, didn't have the biggest story. But you're not going to move NeNe Leaks from her seat. You're just not, you're not doing it. You're not going to do it to Kyle. Kyle didn't have, every season, Kyle didn't have the main story. But she's Kyle Legend Richards. You're not going to move her. So when you guys said, but Carlos Karen was moved, it's different with Karen being moved because Karen, Karen is not, listen, Karen's the fan favorite, right? You could be the fan favorite, but not be considered the face of the show. Um, and I don't think Karen, I think even Karen can say her and Giselle are both the faces of the show. And I would say yes, but I think Giselle has one up on her. And I think by them sitting Giselle next to Karen, baby. Like I said, imagine sitting Nene Leaks next to Kenya. Second to Kenya. That's what this feels like with Giselle sitting next to Karen. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta sometimes eat humble pie and realize you have to do what's best for the show. You can say you want to do what's best for the show, but you have to show it. And Karen showed it. Karen tried a lot this season for what I saw to get the girls together. Her and Robin don't like each other, that's fine, but Karen tried to rally the girls. Um, so shout out to Karen. But baby, shout out to Mia, bitch. Yes. Mia be front and center, baby. Mia be on it. Mia be taking over. Mia be forcing. Mia be powerful. A lot of y'all tagged me and said, that, that Carlos, baby, he know what he be talking about. He called it. He said, Mia's the future Potomac. Y'all don't see it, and that's fine. When Mia first stepped on the scene in her first episode, go back on my tweets. I'll do it myself, child. I said, watch out for this one, baby. She is a star. One thing about me, I know a star when I see one. And Mia is a star. The reason why I said Mia is the future of Potomac is because Mia is funny. She's self-deprecating. She owns it, but she also don't remember a lot. <laughs> but she's funny. Um, she doesn't take this so seriously. And I and I and I think we love reality stars who can have fun with the audience. And Mia, Mia knows what she's doing. Mia is having fun and she's being herself. And Mia to me is a breath of fresh air. And I'm gonna say this, and y'all gonna read me. The way I feel about Mia is the way I felt about Portia when I worked with her come season six. And I told you guys this story that when it was time for a season eight reunion, um, Nene was not uh, full time season eight. She came on the Jamaica trip. And we knew that Kenya was not going to lose her seat that season because Kenya is Kenya. Um, and there were conversations about who should sit next to Andy. And they were talking about Candy and Phaedra. And I was like, it needs to be Portia. And I, I already said this story, so I won't go deep into it. But long story short, I have always believed in Portia. I love me some Portia. And I said, Portia is the future of, of, of Atlanta Housewives. And I said, one day y'all going to see it. I'm just telling y'all, sit Portia next to Andy, and Portia is going to deliver. Because Portia is going to know what that seat means. And she's going to bring everything to it because she knows it's important. Candy doesn't care about the first seat. That's not, she don't, so don't, you don't need to give it to Candy. She don't care about that. That doesn't move her. And I said, it'll move Portia because Portia needs to know, like, we believe in you and we see you, sis. And they gave it to Portia. 
and Portia won. And now Sweet 16 of Atlanta Housewives coming up, and Portia is becoming the face of the show now, her and Kenya. We, li- we, we love it here. So going back to Mia, them giving Mia first chair is proving my point. Mia, I believe when Mia said that seat, she said, Knowing Mia, she was like, okay, more cleavage. Mia said, baby, because all eyes going to be on me, bitch. Sorry, God. Okay. Mia was like, yes, because Mia knew what she, Mia knew what that seat meant. Mia said, "It it feels good to be number one. And I, I I bet you Mia delivered a great performance. I bet you she did. That seat does something to a person. And I believe Mia did something great. Once again, shout out to the producers over at Potomac. Fabulous job. Perfection. You are a genius, my friend. Shout out, baby. We love it here. Um, You did well, honey. I will say her name, but she's private, and I don't want y'all stalking her. Because <laughs> y'all be finding these producers, honey. Not everybody wants to do this. Y'all be finding producers and attacking them. By the way, can y'all stop doing that? Don't attack producers who have not elected to be in front of the camera. A lot of producers like to be behind the scenes and let them be. Stop attacking them. It's not, it's not cute. It's not fun. Leave them alone. Like, that's not, that's not cool. I don't like that. Uh, you know, if you want to attack me, it's fine. I signed up for it. I don't give a shit. But there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a large amount of producers who love their privacy, and we should respect it. And that's the only reason why I'm not saying this person's name, because she's private, and I respect it. But shout out, bitch. You did that. Genius, honey. Mwah. Okay. Bitch, Mia! Was probably like, bam, boom, dude. She, she, she delivered. Pepperoni pizza, bitch. Honey, Little Caesars. Domino's, baby. Papa John's, honey. Mia be delivering. Mia be pizza girl. <laughs> Mia in the hot seat. I love it for her. Mia is the new Portia. Are y'all reading me? That's a strong statement. And when I say new Portia, what I mean is just like how Portia came on her season and when when I recommended Portia get first chair at season eight reunion and Portia, Portia trends number one whenever anything happens to her. Portia is that girl and we love it for, for for my good sis. Mia is gonna be down in Potomac. Just watch. Mia is very likable. Mia is funny. She's gorgeous. And she gives you her life and she gives you great scenes. And look, I can't wait to child, based on that seating chart, I may go back to watching Potomac on Sunday, child. Y'all may get a live review out of me. I'm gonna go back watching it. I, I didn't like I didn't like the the divide this season. I don't like that. I don't like to see everybody don't get along, and then I feel like it's a takedown of Candace, this Wendy NECA. So I didn't like all of that. And I don't like watching TV where I get upset. And, you know, I want the girls to get back to enjoying each other, having fun, fun shade. You know, like Karen hair or her wig being shifted in the wind, like, or Karen telling Ashley, don't drop the soap. I mean, you know, that whole thing. Like, that was fun. Giselle um, um, telling Ashley to come back in, Can- uh, in Candace's house. You know, after saying, girl, 
don't scrape your mama's table with this knife in your hand. Like, that's funny. We want that back. We want the girls to get along and multiply. So I think the seating chart is putting the entire cast on notice that none of y'all are safe. And in my opinion, I'll save this for part three reunion. Because I will review all three parts reunion. It's going to be three parts. Because, you know. Um, wait, is it? Anyways, I'll I'll um give you my thoughts after the last part of the reunion. I do feel like two housewives should go. I think you all know who one of them is because I've made it no secret. <laughs> and I like her, but I just think she should go. At least for two years. But I think two housewives should go. Well, no, three. I think three I think three Potomac housewives should go. And I will let you guys know who they are. Um, I'm very happy for Mia. I'm very proud of Mia. Y'all slept on Mia. Um, Mia slept on couches. I'm teasing. <laughs> I love you, Mia. I'm, I'm having fun with you. Uh, Mia be sleeping in. Yes, honey. Um, Y'all slept on Mia. And Mia rose to the occasion. And I could not be more proud of her. I love me some Mia. I don't know any other person who I would personally interview their boyfriend that did not make it on the show yet. Her her boyfriend Incognito, who I who I love. And I love that they're back together. And I love Gordon. Um I I I think this is such a step in the right direction for the show. And I want Mia. My advice to you, Mia, is this. Take this win and 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 use it as your superpower, but don't let it use you. Did you hear me? And this is for all reality stars, honestly. You're only as good as your last episode. You're only as good as your last season. When you feel like your shit doesn't stink, when you feel like it's all about you, when you feel like your present is a present, and you show up and you don't show out, and you just sit there because you're comfortable, life will humble you. It will. That's the way it works. And for Mia, my advice for you is Bask in this glory, okay, and and use this to propel you to have more confidence to know you don't need to be a part of anyone's team. You build your own team, and you focus on your own race, the race of 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 the journey of of your time on the show. Don't try to be like this person. Don't listen to that person because they're going to sabotage you. You getting first seat, Mia, um, a bull's eye going to be on you. There's going to be people who you thought were your friends that's going to come for you. Um, you're not going to be seen anymore. It's like, oh, that's cute, Mia. She's cute. We like Mia. Mia's cute. Um, they're going to come for you, Mia. <laughs> I'm just warning you, baby. They're going to come for you. But my hope for you is to, to just stay being you. Um, don't let this get you a big head. Remain humble. Take this as a way of knowing that we all have confidence in you. You have the ability to be the Porsche of Potomac. Mia Thornton has the ability to be the Porsche of Potomac. But you remain humble. You do your job. You do it well. You show up. You work. You show out. You be real. And you don't be on any team. You get along with everybody. Even the girls you read. Don't throw drinks in no more faces, Mia, girl. We gonna... Stop. Don't do that no more, baby. Okay. 
Um, and and always, 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 always be appreciative of the opportunity. Congratulations, Mia. Me and the Mama Mias are proud of you. As your man Incognito said, I'm the king of the raindrops. And he said, your fan base is the Mia Moors. I said, no, it ain't. It's the Mama Mias. And he said, it's the Mia Moors. And I said, child, I'll talk to Mia. But congratulations, Mia. On behalf of the Mama Mias, the Mia Moors, and that's the king of the raindrops. Honey, we salute you, baby. Congratulations. This is a step in the right direction. We believe in you. We love you. Continue to make us proud and remain humble.